So, hello viewers, welcome back to this course. So, today we are going to uh, start with the lecture 17 and we are going to deal with some other differential equations and solving them with the help of the Laplace transformation. So, the most important Laplace uh, the differential equation we will want to solve with the help of Dirac delta function. And if you know that suppose I in this case suppose I want to solve a differential equation of this type y double dash minus 4 y dash plus 4 y is equal to on the right hand side I have the drag delta function t minus 2. And my initial condition is given to me that y 0 is 1 and y dash 0 is equal to 1. Now, if you see that this equation has drag delta function on the right hand side and if you remember then that whenever the right hand side function is a drag delta function and if you want to solve this differential equation the solution will be the green functions. And in this case the solution for this will be the green functions. And the green functions you already know that how to find the green functions we have done lot of examples in the previous classes for the different different type of differential equation. So, in this case now and you also know that the finding the green function is very hectic process and because you in that case you have to find out the for the second order equation you have to find 4 coefficient and then you are you have to apply the properties of the green function like the continuity jump. So, in that only then we are able to find the green function, but you, you will see that one that if I want to solve this one with the help of Laplace transformation then it is quite easier as compared to the previous one. So, this is my green functions. So, this is by equation number 1 and this is my initial value problem. And if you also remember that if I want to apply my previous methods as we have done to solve the second order differential equation, then I am unable to find out because we in that case we are unable to find out that what will happen when I apply I want to find the particular solution whenever the right hand side function is a direct delta function. So, this is the benefit of dealing with the Laplace transformation because we already know the Laplace transformation is the direct delta function. So, let us uh, in this case I am that my function y t is well defined it is a piecewise uh, continuous function for the whole t from 0 to infinity and it is of exponential order. So, I am assuming this one that t belongs to and y t is also of exponential order. Then apply Laplace transformation. on both side of equation 1. So, we can take the Laplace transformation on both side. So, from here I will take the Laplace transformation on the left side for y and the Laplace transformation of the drag data function. with my initial condition. So, if I apply this one <coughs> this will be a linear property of the Laplace transformation minus 4 Laplace transformation of y dash plus 4 Laplace transformation of y. And the Laplace transformation the drag delta function just now in the previous class we have found out. So, it will be minus 2 s. So, this is my Laplace transformation of the drag delta function. So, this will be s square y s because I am assuming that the Laplace transformation of y t is y s minus. So, it will be minus s y 0 minus y dash 0 minus 4 
the Laplace transform s y s minus y 0 plus 4 y s is equal to e raise to power minus 2 s. So, from here and this value is given to me that is 1 and 1 value. So, from here I can write that this is equal to s square I can take y s common. So, this will be s square will come from here minus 4 s plus 4 and the remaining things I will collect from corresponding to s. So, this will be minus s minus 1 minus minus plus. So, it will be plus 4. So, this will be value is equal to e raised to power minus 2 s. Okay. And from here, I can write from here, then this value will be minus s minus 1 plus 4. So, this will be y s s square minus 4 s plus 4 and this will be equal to minus s plus 3. So, from here I have my y s is e raise to power minus 2 s and taking on the left hand side. So, it will be plus s minus 3 divided by this factor that is. So, this factor I can write as s minus 2 whole square because this will be s square plus 4 minus 4 s. Yeah. So, this will be equal to this. So, if I further solving this one then. So, from here I can write my y s as e raise to power minus 2 s over s minus 2 whole square plus s minus 3 over s minus 2 whole square. So, in that case now I want to take the Laplace transformation inverse Laplace transformation. So, I want to find my y t and I know that my y t the solution will be the Laplace inverse of y s because this is the we are able to transfer the differential equation to the algebraic form. So, this is algebraic form and this will be equal to the L inverse of s minus 2 whole square plus L inverse s minus 3 over s minus 2 whole square. So, this one I want to find the solution for. Now, from here if you see it clearly then from here now Laplace inverse I can define for this. This, this factor I can. So, from here first of all I want to find out that the Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 2 whole square. So, what will be this one? I know that the Laplace of t will be 1 by s. So, I am heading minus 2. So, if you see this one, so from here I can write this will be equal to t e raised to power 2 t because I know the Laplace of t is 1 over s and the Laplace of e 2 t into t is 1 over s minus 2 whole square. So, that we already know. So, from here I L inverse of this one. Similarly, the Laplace inverse of 
So, this another factor I can write in this form s minus 3 I can write as s minus 2 over s minus 2 whole square minus minus so minus 1 will be there so it will be minus 1 s minus 2 whole square and this one become so this vector will cancel out so i have a laplace inverse of the remaining part so this will be over s minus 2 and minus 1 over s minus 2 whole square so from here this will be equal to so 1 over s minus 2 will be i can write as a t not t e 2t from here minus and this is again the same t e 2t so now we are so i want to find my y t so laplace inverse this is my fact t into e raised power 2t so that is the laplace but i am here if you see that we are multiplied by e raised power minus 2s so it means that whenever i want to find the laplace inverse that will be involving with the unit step function so from here i can write the laplace for laplace inverse for this factor as t minus 2 e raised to power 2 t minus 2 so this is i am writing u t minus 2 plus e 2 t minus t e 2 t so this is the solution for the given differential equation now i told you that in this case it is a green function so i can just try to write the solution in the form of green function so from here i can write my yt as now if i put t less than 2 this part will be 0 so i can write this function as e so i can write this one as e 2t minus t e 2t when t is less than 1 and when the t is greater than 1 up to infinity then this value will be t e plus t minus 2 e raised to power 2 t minus 2 because in that case this value will be 1. So, this is my green functions. So, this is the green functions or I can say that the solution of the given differential equation. So, from here you can see that using the Laplace transformation very easily we are able to find the solution whenever the drag delta function is given on the right hand side. So, that is the another application of the Laplace transformation. Now, uh, we want to take the another very important concept that is being involved in the uh, in the theory of mathematics that is called the convolution. But before that one I want just want to discuss that why this is needed because if you see that suppose I have a like in this case we are solving the second order differential equation. So, suppose I have a second order differential equation a some a y double dash plus b y dash plus c y is equal to some function f t and I am solving this one with some initial condition y 0 is y 0 and y dash at 0 is y 0 dash then I take the Laplace and if you see that whenever we take the Laplace of this one 
I will take the Laplace. So, Laplace will be plus C y is equal to the Laplace of f t and that is equal to f s and from here I will get the Laplace in the form of A So, it will be A s square it will come from here plus B s and then plus C this will come plus some function I can write in the form of s. So, I just write the another function. So, that I can write as a function in g s the remaining part will come. So, that is equal to f s. Now, if I find the solution of this one in the form of y t then I have to take the inverse of that Laplace. So, now from here I can write as a y s is f s minus of g s divided by this factor. So, this factor. So, if you from here you can see that this is equal to f s multiplied by some another function a s square plus b s plus c minus g s multiply by another function. So, here what I am doing I have a one function of s multiply by another function I have one function of s multiply by another function. So, I want to find out that if I want to take the inverse. So, I want to find my y t. <coughs> so, my y t in this case will be inverse of y s and this is equal to suppose I take this one. So, I will take from here 1 over s and another function a s square plus b s plus c. So, I want to check that what will happen if I take the inverse of the Laplace for the multiplication of the two function f s and some another function. So, because whenever I want to solve a differential equation I always come across this type of multiplication of two f s and some function of s and then I want to take the inverse of that one. So, for this one I will take the concept to a uh, start with a new concept and that is called the convolution. convolution. So, what is the meaning of convolution? <coughs> let I have two function, let my function I have two function f t and g t. So, these are the two function be defined on 0 to infinity. Then well defined then I want to define the convolution f star g. So, we represent by convolution by the star and it is a again the function of t. So, I will say that this is from 0 to t right. So, what I do I will write here function f t minus tau into g of tau d tau. So, that is the convolution of the two function. So, in this case what are you doing because it is it should be function of t. So, I am taking the integration from 0 to t. So, what do you do f t minus tau. So, it is just the shifting of the function by tau multiplied by another function g tau and taking the integration with respect to tau. So, whatever this value is coming that is called the convolution of the function f and t. For example, so, for example, I just want to from take that let it take f t is some function t and g t I take as sin t. So, these are two function and I want to define the convolution. So, convolution of these two function will be, so it will be f t 
taking the convolution with sin t or I can write similarly just we have written. So, it is from 0 to t <coughs> and then t minus tau. So, this function is t. So, in I will write t minus tau here into sin tau d tau. So, that is we want to take and from here <coughs> If you from here I just want to integrate then I will apply the by parts rule. So, from here if you apply the by parts then I can take t minus tau and the integration is minus cos tau 0 to t minus and the derivative of this one. So, it will be minus 1 into minus cos tau d tau 0 to t and if you solve this one then you will ultimately you will get the solution as t minus sin t. So, that is my convolution, but the question comes that in this case we have taken this function as a f t and some other function g t. What about if I take this as a sin t and this as t just interchanging the function or maybe I can define instead of f and f star g I can define this value as a g star f because it is up to me that whether I am considering this as a function f t or as a g t. So, I, I should be able to find the what is the uh, the convolution if I interchange the function. So, in that case you if you take this as a sin t function as a first function so, from here I can define my sin t minus tau and then tau and d tau and if you do the integration this one the same way by by parts then if you solve this one you will find that this is also equal to minus t minus sin t. So, from here one thing I can write from here that f star g is same as t. and this property you know that it is called the commutative property. So, I will write down few properties of the convolution. Convolution of two function. So, the first one is that f star g is equal to g star f. So, it is commutative, commutative. Second property we can also verify that f star and I have g 1 plus g 2. So, this is equal to f star g 1 plus f star g 2 and it means this is called the distributive property. distributive and the third one is the that suppose I have three function f g and h. So, this is equal to f g h. So, it does not matter I put the bracket here or I put the bracket here the answer will be same. So, this property is called the associativity. associative property. So, the convolution satisfy all these three properties. It is commutative, distributive and associative. Now, with the help of this one convolution, so let us define the convolution theorem. So, this is the convolution theorem. So, convolution theorem says that let let I have function f t and g t be piecewise continuous functions defined on interval 0 to infinity 
and of exponential order then if I wanted to find the Laplace of convolution of the function. So, this is the convolution and I am find the Laplace of this one. So, that will be equal to product of the Laplace of the corresponding function or it will be equal to f of s multiplied by g of s. So, this is a simple multiplication we are taking and this is the convolution. So, that is the convolution theorem. From here, so I can prove this one it is very easy to prove here that now I know that if I take the product of f s <coughs> into g s. So, it is defined as 0 to infinity e raise to power minus s t f t d t multiply by 0 to infinity e raised to power minus s u I just take as a u because t is already there g of u d u. So, this is given to me. Now, what I do is that from here it is a function in the t integration with respect to t and this is an integration with respect to u. So, from here I can take this one and mixing together these two integral. So, from here I can write from 0 to infinity I can write for minus s t f t is for minus s u g u d t t u. I just mix because it is a I am taking integration here with respect to t and here with respect to u does not matter. Now, from here I can write this as a 0 to infinity and this one as I s I take t plus u and then I write f t. So, this one I am taking with respect to t. So, f t g of u and then d u d t. So, this one. Now, what I do is that from here I will write like this one it is f t d t and then inside I will define 0 to 2 e raise to power minus s t plus u g u d u. Now, so I want to solve this one. So, let I assume t plus u is equal to some I should choose as a some tau and from here my u will be tau minus t. Now, t is the variable u is the variable. So, tau is also another variable. So, u is equal to this one. So, from here I can say that my d u is equal to d tau. From here I can define that my integration becomes now. So, f t d t 0 to infinity it become now when my u is 0 
but tau is t. So, it is starting from t to infinity I can write it as a e minus s tau g of u. So, u is this one tau minus t and this is equal to d tau. So, that becomes now my tau is moving from t to infinity and this will become this one. So, from here so I defining e raised to power minus s tau d tau. So, this one I am defining here and inside I am taking this one g of tau minus t was already there it is f t d t. So, this is given to me. Now, I just want to check out that what will be the limits for the integration. So, if you just see it. So, here it I have a tau and t. Now, my tau is equal to t. So, this is the line that is tau is equal to t. So, for this integration I have a tau from t to infinity. So, my tau is this one this is the area of integration and then my t is from 0 to infinite. So, that is t from 0 to infinite. So, this area and if you see this integration 0 to 2 is this area and then the common area will be this form only. Then what I do I now I take my t inside. So, t is now starting from tau to infinity. So, I can write it as a tau to infinity this one and then my tau will be from 0 to infinity. So, it will be 0 to infinity. So, this is the how we can interchange the integration and then we will solve this one. So, it will be now <coughs> if I solve this will be 0 to infinity e raised to power minus tau d tau and this is now I can define this one as 0 to t d t. So, this one we have taken from tau. And then and this is what it is a convolution g star f at tau at t dt. So, this is the convolution and from here I can say that so this is tau. So, from here I can say that this is equal to the Laplace transformation of g star f of and that is so the here we are taking the Laplace transformation of the convolution of the function and this is coming equal to the the g of s into f of s. So, it means that if I take the Laplace transformation of the convolution of the two function. So, that is equal to the product of their Laplace transformation. So, this is a very important properties because this is being used whenever we are solving some differential equation we are to use this again and again. So, let us do one example. <coughs> so, from here now 
Now I have for example, so let us I want to solve this equation y double dash plus 9y is equal to sin 3t because if you see in the previous one this type of things we are always so in this case we have started with the integration of two functions now to if you look carefully that how we are doing this one we are just start with the integration and then we making this integration as the double integration taking inside this one and then we combine these factors and then I am taking the transformation. So, this transformation becomes this from here my transformation become this one. Now, it was tau here and t here. So, now I are interchanging the so this one we have written. So, it becomes t to infinity and then I am changing the factor from now I am changing this is my tau and this is t. So, interchanging the order of integration this is tau and the t and from here you will see that if I do the integration. So, this becomes this factor becomes 0 to tau and it is from 0 to infinity because this area we have to choose. Now, t if I want to take here t then from 0 to tau 0 to t and then taking the integration further. So, from here if you do this one <coughs> so now I want to find out the Laplace transformation for this function this differential equation. So, I will take the Laplace three D and then this is equal to s square y s because other initial condition we have chosen to be 0 and then it becomes 9 y s and the sin 3 t is 3 over s square plus 9 that we already know. So, from here my y s will be 3 over s square plus 9 and divided by s square plus 9. Now, I have two functions. So, this is equal to I can say that it is equal to some f s into some g o s is equal to some g of s. So, I have a product of two functions now and then I want to find out the value of y t that is the inverse of y s. So, if I do this one I will apply the convolution here. So, convolution for this one will be L inverse and this is I am taking f of s into g of s and this will be equal to f of the convolution it will be equal to f convolution with g t. So, that we know ok. Now, from I have this f s. So, we have chosen f s is this one. So, my f s is 3 by s square plus 9. So, in that case my f t will be sin 3 t. So, from here I can say that my f is this one and g t is also sin 3 t ok. So, from here my L inverse. So, I can take 1 by 3. So, 3 by s square plus 9 into 3 by s square plus 9. So, I want to apply the convolution here. So, this will be equal to 1 over 3 
so that will be equal to 1 over 3 0 to t and then sin 3 t minus tau into sin 3 tau d tau. So that will be the convolution of this function. So from here if I want to find out the solution, so this one we can solve and this will be 0 to t then I have to apply that the trigonometric equalities for this one. So this is equal to cos 3, so adding this one, so it will be cos 3 2t minus tau minus cos 3t divided by 2 and then d tau. So that will be the because it is sin a sin b, so this will be cos a plus b minus cos a minus b. So if you solve it further, it will be 1 by 6 and then I am taking the integration of this function cos 3 2t minus tau d tau minus 0 to infinity cos 3t sorry tau. So this is tau d tau. So from here I get the solution that is 1 by 18 sin 3t minus 3t cos 3t. So that is the solution for this equation. So in this case we have applied the convolution. We can solve it by the other methods also because here it is a square. So then we can look for the derivative, the derivative the uh, given Laplace transformation, but here I want to use the convolution. So using the convolution we are able to solve this one. By other, if you go by the other method the same solution should come that we can verify yourself. So from here, so this is because Laplace transformation has numerous number of application that can be used to solve differential equation ODs and even PDs, but in this course we are limited to the OD also only. So that is all about the Laplace transformation. And in the next class, we are going to start with the new topic and that is called the Fourier series. So thanks very much for watching this lecture. Thank you.